Hi, fourth grade. Since we can't be in school right now, I'm going to be reading books to the different classes. I picked this one out for fourth grade because it hasn't been put in the library yet, and I don't think very many of you have read it. It is called What's His Face by Gordon Corman. He also wrote uh, Swindle and Slacker. He's got a whole bunch of books that he read. I thought this one would be fun to read because it's pretty lighthearted and not very serious and we need some laughter in our lives. Chapter 1. Meet What's-His-Face. Cooper Vega is invisible. Okay, not really. But when you're the new kid and people look right through you, it sure feels that way. Cooper is pretty much the world champion of being the new kid, since Stratford Middle is his fifth school in the past three years. He keeps his distance from the, from the visible people on the soccer field to avoid being trampled by mistake. There's another thing about being invisible. It's your job to get out of the way. At Stratford Middle School, the opposite of invisible is Brock Bumgartner. Right now, Big Brock is poised in front of the goal, deflecting every ball that comes his way. He dives, he leaps, he flies. He's, his hands are everywhere. He's just a blur. Nothing gets past him, especially not the compliments. Great save, Brock. You're the man. Best goalie in the state. Brock soaps up the praise for a while. He gets bored fast, though. Come on, you guys. Let's play a game. The bell ra rings in 15 minutes. They choose sides, but Brock's team ends up a man short. Many pairs of eyes scan the schoolyard, searching for an extra player. Brock loses his patience. Find someone, he orders. What about what's-his-face over there, suggests Aiden. Cooper freezes. Aiden's long fingers are pointed directly at him. This always comes sooner or later, the moment you become visible. Usually because they need something from you. Brock turns around. What's his face? He looks right through Cooper. The new kid, Aiden persists. The guy with the hair. Cooper flinches. His mop of shaggy brown hair, almost shoulder length, resettles itself. My name is Cooper, he supplies. All right, you're on defense, Brock tells him. Don't mess up. Eagerly, Cooper jogs onto the field. He's been a student at Stratford Middle School for a week and a half, and this is the first time anyone has noticed he's even alive. Changing schools every six months is standard stuff for the Vega family. Captain Vega's in the military. You go where you're sent, and you keep quiet about it. Cooper, you... Cooper's used to the lifestyle, but doesn't make it any easier, especially in a town like Stratford, where all the kids seem to have been together since they were old enough to walk. Cooper's happy to be included, even as What's-His-Face or the new kid. Some of the places he's been parachuted into have been welcoming and friendly. This isn't one of them. Cooper isn't a stellar athlete to begin with, but he's especially awkward today. It's the phone. His brand new GX4000, the most advanced smartphone on the market. He's only had it since yesterday. It was his sorry we had to move you away from all your friends again present. If he falls down and smashes it, he'll never forgive himself, and his parents will definitely never forgive him. The thing costs nearly twice as much as top-of-the-line iPhone or Android. It's bigger and bulkier and feels somehow vulnerable to his pocket in his pocket, like it's always on the verge of falling out. What are you doing, kid? Brock's voice barks from behind Cooper. You're just standing there. Get your head in the game. 
There's no question who the captain, who the criticism is aimed at. The goalie has plenty of coaching for everybody, but all the others have names. Cooper is the only kid. The shot comes out of nowhere, a booming kick at waist level. It's definitely a phone killer. As Cooper watches it approach on a collision course with his front pocket, he understands that this is the choice between soccer glory or his GX4000. <clears throat> he makes the obvious choice. In the last second, he hurls his body out of the path of the ball, which sizzles past a flat-footed Brock into the net. The star goalie stands there, open mouth. New teams, Brock howls. I'm not playing with what's-his-face. We don't want him either, is the reply from the opposite side of the field. Then get me another defender. I'll take anybody. Jolie, play defense. I don't care if you're a girl. You've got to be better than what's-his-face. Cooper slinks off the field. It's bad enough to be humiliated, but why does it have to be in front of Jolie Solomon, who's been the only bright spot in this miserable school? It would be an honor to be called what's-his-face by Jolie, who has never before glanced at Cooper's direction. She's noticing him now as the guy who made a fool of himself in recess soccer game. Jolie raises her arm, indicating a short cast around her wrist. Can't! The cast doesn't come off till Thursday. <clears throat> then, much to Cooper's surprise, she added disapprovingly, and his name isn't What's-His-Face. It's... She regarded him in sudden surprise. Sorry, I guess I never knew your name. Cooper, he tells her, following her off the field. Cooper Vega. Cooper, Cooper, party pooper, calls a voice behind him. This is just great. Where are we going to find another player in, what, seven minutes? Cooper looks worried, but Jolie is serene. Don't let them get to you, she said. They're harmless. They just take their sports way too seriously, especially Brock. You seem pretty sporty, Cooper observes, nodding to her cast. She shrugs. Soccer's a little slow for me. I like to get the blood pumping. I broke my wrist skateboarding on Luke, on Luke Strafford. Kiteboarding? You know, it's a cross between parasailing and water skiing with a little snowbound throw, thrown in. It's amazing how hard water is when you come down on it from 30 feet. Cooper sizes up his companion. She's slim and kind of petite, definitely not muscle-bound or anything you would expect from an extreme athlete. Not that he's met a lot of extreme athletes before. Her t-shirt does say scuba insanity with a cartoon of a diver taking an underwater selfie with a giant squid. You dive too, he asked. Not that much anymore, she replies. My dad won't let me go in the water where there are sharks. He's too overprotective. I also write rock climb, zip line, ski jump, bungee, and do parkour. I'll try normal things too. Roller coasters aren't that boring, as long as they're really vertical. I also, I'm also into drama. I want to be an actress when I grow up. Either that or an astronaut. For Cooper, it's almost as bad as getting thrown out of the soccer game to find out how little he had in common with this girl. <clears throat> we just moved here three weeks ago, he said, to keep the conversation going. My dad's military. He's stationed at Fort Bensonhurst. She points out off in the distance. You can just make out the tower from here, over there, in between those two hills. Our school is built on top of the third hill, so you can see for miles. There should be a good spot to base jump around here, but believe me, I've checked. Nothing. Cooper is shocked. But you wouldn't actually do that, right? 
I wish. My parents won't let me have a parachute until I'm 18. What's the point in living in three hills if you can't use the altitude? Three hills, Cooper repeats. <clears throat> that used to be what the town was called. You know, before the wolf moved in. Cooper laughs. Now, you really got me confused. Who's the wolf? Somerset Wolfston, one of the richest man and men in America. Surely you've noticed his estate. The mansion is the biggest building in town. She walks him to the south side of the playground. See all that? Every inch of that is his. The house and the other buildings. building is a museum. Cooper gazes over the vast property which seems to take up the entire south end of town. It looks like a normal national park with gleaming mar marble buildings, rolling hills, glittering ponds, flower beds, and ha handsome groves of trees. No question. This is a man with tons of money. Why does he have his own ma mansion, Cooper asks. He's a Shakespearean nut, Jolie explains. He has the biggest private collection in the world. That's the only reason he moved here 30 years ago. He needed a good spot to put up a custom-made gallery for all his old books, documents, and artifacts. Everything is so old that it has to be in special climate-controlled cases. Plus, he needs security. It's worth so much money that even a billionaire can't afford to lose it. Upon closer inspection, Cooper could see the Greenway has been strategically placed to hide a heavy stone wall and a high security gate. Mr. Wolfson must really love Shakespeare, he comments. Tell me about it. Back in the day, he refused to buy the property unless Three Hills agreed to change the name to Stratford. That was Shakespeare's hometown in England. It was hard times back when he made the offer and the town needed the cash, so they agreed. My parents remember it. It was a huge deal for the locals. A lot of people were still ticked off that the wolf was using money out of his pocket and began tapping on the screen searching for the camera app. He's still getting used to to it, it's practically countless functions. Jolie is impressed. Wow, is that a GX4000? I've heard about them, but I've never seen one. It's the latest bribe, he told her. Every time we have to move, my parents get my sister and me something great to make up for it. He frames a panoramic shot of the mansion and museum. Something to send my friends back in Colorado. As he reaches to take the picture, the image on the screen dissolves into multicolored snow. There's an angry tone, and the phone powers off. Oops, Cooper said in a... I'm new to this. I must have zigged when I should have zagged. My phone is kind of buggy too, Jolene says sympathetically. Of course, that might be from the time it fell out of my pocket on top of the rock climbing wall. But it works, sometimes. Mine's brand new, so it should work all the time. The GX4000 powers up again with a series of beeps and an odd whistle that sounds nothing like Cooper ever heard before from an electronic device. He points the lens at the Wolfson property. Wait! Jolene leans into the frame, beaming and holding up two V's for victory signs. Okay. She's blocking the museum and at least half of the mansion, but who cares? For a picture of Stratford to send to his old neighborhood, this would be perfect. Maybe the guys will think she's his girlfriend. What do they know? They're in Colorado. He takes a shot. A faint blue smart jumps from the screen onto his finger. Ow! His phone drops from his hands onto the grass. Wow, Jolie comments. Your phone really is buggier than mine. Cooper sto stoops to pick it up. No problem. It's all in one piece. Now this time, you stand a little to the left. He 
He's interrupted by the school bell. Let's go. See you in class. She joins the stampede for the building. Cooper hangs back, scrolling through pages of unfamiliar apps in search of the photo library. One entry, it says. Well, what do you know, he thinks. It's overpriced, overcomplicated gizmo actually took a really real picture. He taps the icon and examines it. There are the other two hills in the distance, the sprawling Wilson place in front, and there's Jolie, her outline anyway. You can see her arms and the two V's for victory signs, but the rest of it is hidden behind a silver gray shimmer of distortion right in the middle of the photograph. It might as well be a picture of Godzilla, if Godzilla had fingers. Of course, the phone you get for 99 cents at Walmart takes pictures just fine, but this magnificent piece of technology sticks a silver blob in front of the only part of the photograph that's worth taking. The second bell rings, the late one. Not only is he what's-his-face, he's on the verge of becoming what's-his-face with detention. Cooper stuck, sticks the phone in his pocket and runs to join the last of the stragglers at the door. As a military kid, he's gotten used to a lot of towns. Some good, some bad, some in between. But this place gives him an uneasy feeling. 